The village of Spring Valley, Wisconsin, lies 300 feet below the surrounding farmland. This sleepy little village of 1400 or so gets its name from the springs found around the valley and in particular feeding Lake George to its north, which is located behind the largest man-made earthen wall in the Midwest. To explain how the geography and geology of Spring Valley formed, we first need to discuss what formed the landscape of western Wisconsin. Earth's geology is riddled with evidence of an electrically based global cataclysm. The most recognizable evidence is in the landscape contours known as Lichtenberg figures. Lichtenberg artwork is a form of art that uses an electrical discharge across a surface, such as wood or plexiglass, in order to create the fractal pattern of electricity in the medium. Watch what happens when you ground the electrically charged plexiglass. This electric form etched into the plexiglass is called a Lichtenberg figure. This figure is found across western Wisconsin. When we layer over the wood example, it reveals a stunning perspective of the terrain as it was carved into place. Spring Valley, Wisconsin is at the tip of a Lichtenberg figure. To understand Lake George and the formation of the valley, here is plasma researcher Andy Hall to explain the buildup of a subsurface electric charge. It makes sense that water is found where lightning is struck. Subsurface water is a source of ionization that intensifies charge density and therefore the electric field, attracting lightning to its location. Standing surface water won't do that because ions have no point to collect. They spread evenly over the surface of the water. But subterranean water is trapped in the earth where ions can collect and build concentration, locally intensifying the electric field. Pits, craters, and rills formed by lightning leave depressions over aquifers that are natural for springs and wells. The presence of springs in and around Spring Valley indicate the sedimentary limestone had a body of subsurface water which formed and existed between the layers and cracks of limestone prior to the electrical discharge. This aquifer then attracted the electrical sputtering, which dug the deep focal Lichtenberg figure we see today, leading to Spring Valley. Lichtenberg figures not only happened horizontally across the surface of Wisconsin, but also vertically into the earth. Let's look at Spring Valley's local attraction called the Crystal Cave, and the evidence for a vertical electrical formation event. The first thing to note about the Crystal Cave is the shape. When aquifers form between limestone, they form along fracture corridors and down vertical cracks. The shape and declination of the cave indicates it was likely part of an aquifer. Indeed, the crystal cave has water erosion limestone near the ceilings where water flowed through a channel and heavily eroded the rock over hundreds of thousands or perhaps even millions of years. This form of erosion only happens with water and yet the cave shows no meaningful signs of long-term water erosion at the floor level throughout the cavern. The fact water dripping from the ceiling does not pool in the cave indicates there is a much deeper drainage point likely feeding into the local springs. Now where did all of the rock within the cave go? Here in River Falls, Wisconsin, where roads have been built through the hills, we can best understand the missing limestone. The strange iron deposit found in the cave and the process involved in this discharge. At the very top of these hills, clearly striated sedimentary limestone juts vertically 10 to 15 feet. Water does not erode at 90 degree angles. These were the wet upper layers of an ancient seafloor. No academic disputes this, but it should give everyone a moment's pause that we are living on a surface that is clearly in some cases hundreds of feet below the floor of an ancient sea. Where'd the rest of the limestone go? This top layer of limestone would have been the wettest rock and therefore these rocks acted like insulators and passed the charge through them. This is why limestone at the very top is often heavily fractured but otherwise appears normal. Now let's look below the surface. Undifferentiated limestone makes up the next large layer across huge portions of Wisconsin. The title of undifferentiated is unearned, as there are still completely discernible layers which appear to be simply diffused. It is labeled as such because it lacks the traditional rigid striation 
of classical sedimentary limestone, such as found just above it at the top. This exact same feature is also found in the Crystal Cave, classically striated limestone, and then undifferentiated right below. This boundary marks the point where the charge began diffusing through the rock. Let's explore what this process did to the limestone. When you build up a static electric charge and then get shocked by a doorknob, what you may not know is that the arc does not go from you to the doorknob, but rather the doorknob shocks you. This is because electrons are being drawn away from the knob to your hand to equalize the charge. Those electrons are the shock. In the same manner, electrons were sucked up from deep inside the crystal cave. This is the same process that occurs in a galvanic battery, which functions by stripping an electron from the negative anode. Crystal caves was a negative anode due to the buildup of electrons within the aquifer. When the horizontal sputtering reached the crystal cave water table, it triggered a release into the air of the buildup of electrons, which attracted an electrical arc from the positively charged clouds above. The stripping of the electrons broke the bonds of the limestone and effectively disintegrated it into fine particulates of limestone sand. In other areas, it metamorphed the limestone into the crystallized quartz we see today. When undifferentiated limestone falls off in River Falls, it disintegrates into a fine sand. It's not stone, it's baked, fine particulate, sand. This sand in the crystal cavern was then, over time, washed down the cave system, leaving the caverns that we see today. Deeper in the cave, it metamorphed the rock and produced the crystal cave unconformity. The crystal cave unconformity was created by an electrical discharge that metamorphized the rock. Let's look at the formation of the iron deposit. Throughout the undifferentiated limestone in River Falls, we see two features of iron formation. These nodules are created in areas of the rock where a Z-pinch occurred in the electrical discharge. When you see a lightning bolt elbow form, they are called a Z-pinch and produce an increased and localized electromagnetic field and attracted the surrounding ferrous metals to that location in the rock. Along primary lines of the discharge, vertical fractures occurred and drew these ferrous deposits into the crack and aligned along those electromagnetic fields. The iron deposit in Crystal Cave was likely a Z-pinch at the throat of the cave, which magnetically accumulated large amounts of iron oxide to it, creating a layering effect and the vein structure matching the Lichtenberg figures. This experiment replicates the formation of the deposit by creating copper crystals in water using electricity to attract the copper ions. This is the same process that occurred in the cave with iron. Two final features within the cave show evidence of an electrical event. Looking at the ceilings you will find concave cracks and black marks. These would be the entry points of an arm of the Lichtenberg formation into that portion of the cave. Many of these still show black scarring from the heat and perhaps could be tested or carbon dated. The second are the pocket holes found throughout. These are signs of heat super expanding pockets of gas or water during the fluid phase of the limestone. On a final note, the stalactites lack the length to be millions of years old, much less hundreds of thousands. Most are a few inches at best. These are all formations that happened 12 to 13,000 years ago after the cataclysm. There is much more evidence to look at and another mystery to be solved in where the flood debris came from. But suffice it to say, the history of the Crystal Cave formation is far more fascinating than anyone ever expected. Peace.